Okay, and when you're ready, okay, we will, I'll, let me explain how is it going to work today. Uh. Okay, so today we'll be wrapping up all the policies. Okay, so for the viewers out there, if you miss out um, the earlier, well, I heard a dog, is there a dog somewhere? I'm going to mute one of, I'm going to mute the, whoever that's unmuted, yeah. <laughs> Some barking, I thought it was, a, it was a dog somewhere else. Okay, like I, what I've mentioned, okay, we'll be doing a quick recap. Okay, of um, the policies. So for the viewers out there, if you miss out uh, the earlier part on the policies, please catch up with the earlier session on session 13. I believe all of you were here on uh, Visak Day, right? Okay, with the exception of one, Reina. Okay, Reina, uh, because of con capacity issue, wasn't able to accommodate. Yeah, so Reina, you can catch up on lesson 13 on your own. Yeah, okay, so uh, lesson 14. Oh, Gerard looks very scary. I think your, your glasses... <laughs> <laughs> reflect on the UV then suddenly turns, your, your eyes like become vampire <laughs> yeah okay but anyway okay uh, as I was saying uh, catch up on lesson 13 on your own okay so um, today we'll be doing a massive recap on uh, the earlier um, the earlier policies that we have covered under Bisak Day and we will also be covering two of the other policies that we did not have chance to cover which is the tradable permits and uh, education-based policy for underestimation for true cost. Then after that, I'll briefly go on to uh, the small, small solutions for the other kind of um, market failure, which are really not the focus. Okay, and after that, we'll go on to our practice question for today. So our practice question today is very interesting. Okay, it's probably one of the largest case study questions that you'll ever see. Yeah, so it's a 12 mark case study question. Yeah, so... Uh, I will guide you. Okay, don't worry about that. It's probably one of the more challenging ones that you encounter for the time being. Okay, so for those who are having upcoming block tests, common tests, or whatever tests, this kind of case study question will be highly probable. Okay, so please make a bookmark. Okay, on today's lesson, is everyone clear? Okay, so with this, let's do an intensive recap. Huh? Okay, what have we covered on Visak Day? So if you would like me to end on time today, I'm not even saying early, uh, please participate. If not show sure, overrun. Yeah? <laughs> Tap it out. Okay, what was covered? Yeah, I reckon that all the first years were here. Okay, so please participate. Just everyone type out one thing. Okay, we can quickly can okay, quickly wrap up really. Come on. We have learned solutions for externalities and positive and negative externalities, right? Okay, so we learned, a we, we learned two specific acronyms. Do you all still remember what are the acronyms without looking at the book? Okay, we learned. Okay, good. Coming. Who else? Okay, what are the two acronyms that we have learned in the book? Okay, if you're not able to use them here, you're never going to use them in, 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 in real life, huh? Okay, so make sure you're familiar. What are the two acronyms? Quickly tap out. Okay, good, Yuki. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, for those who did not use okay, uh, whatever that we've provided in the book okay, at your own risk, huh? Okay, so this is what we recommend gems and plier all right so i want you all to focus on how to use gems and how to use plier okay with the exception of the e-based policies okay, the rest are targeted at externalities e-based policies are primarily info failure driven okay so you may want to highlight okay the education based policies are info failure driven all right, so okay, let's do a quick recap on positive externalities. I believe I covered most of them. Okay, so let me take out uh, the slides that we have used earlier on. Okay, so um, I won't be going uh, through them in, in depth. Okay, I will just pick out selected points. Uh, what are some of the common mistakes that were often seen in student scripts? Okay, I want you to focus on those. Okay, and if you'd like to take down notes, you can take down notes on page 46. Okay, so um, the first one that I'm going, going to go through is subsidy, okay, which is the alphabet S. Okay, so I would like you to focus on the diagram on the left, okay, which is a indirect subsidy. 
Okay, so indirect subsidy, some of the common mistakes that a lot of students omit. Okay, they do not tell me what is the magnitude of your subsidy. Your subsidy is assumed to be okay, the, as of the same as your marginal external benefit. Okay, so this specific key phrase must be there. Okay, so you have to assume that the, sub, the amount of subsidy is equivalent to the marginal external benefit. Then, okay, the subsidy will have to work through the producers to the consumer. So some of the students, they forgot to relate to producer or forgot to relate to consumer. So these two parties must be present in your answer. Okay, so a subsidy or an indirect subsidy okay, is granted to the producer. Okay, and the producer will experience a lower cost of production. And this will cause your MPC curve to shift to the right because of lower cost of production. And this will translate to cost savings to consumers. Okay, so remember to introduce consumers here. The producers will pass off the cost savings to consumer. And the consumers will have to, as a result of enjoying the cost savings, they will internalize the external benefit. Keyword internalize. So later on, okay, we'll be we'll be covering tax subsidies and tradable permits. These three are what we call market oriented policies that focus on the concept of internalizing. Internalizing simply means holding them accountable. Okay, in layman's term, okay, you want to hold the producer or the consumer accountable for the external cost or external benefit. So once consumers internalize the external benefit, okay, then they will start to start to what? Okay, increase their consumption or production consumption in this case to the socially optimal level, and you will eliminate the dead weight loss. Okay, make sure you state the limitation. Okay. So limitations, I'm going to leave it to you, okay, to state what is the limitation of a subsidy. Okay, you can state budget constraint. Okay, it's a fairly popular outcome. A government will have to spend to finance this. Okay, the same limitation applies for direct um, provision as well. Okay, and this will incur an opportunity cost elsewhere. Okay, you probably if you spend on this good, spend on subsidy of this good, then it's going to deprive you on subsidy on another good, or it's depriving of provision of a, a public good, for instance. Okay, so make sure you relate to limitation, and later on policy questions will have limitation. Okay, and I want all of you to try to use the limitation from the extract. Is everyone clear? Okay, so I'm going to move on to the next part on regulations. Okay, what are the things that you need to know for positive externalities regarding regulation? Okay, so the example that I used last week was education, right? So if we want to mandate an optimal level of consumption of education, there are rules and regulation or legal regulations laws to him or legislation some schools use that so the whole idea behind regulation legislation law is to enforce on the penalty expect okay what happens when there is non-conformity okay for case studies then you have to look out for the case material whether do they suggest any laws they are in place right so remember do not but do not blindly regurgitate things from the notes, okay, from your lecture notes. Things, things that you use must be supported by the preamble or the case material. So later on in the practice question, you will be tested on that uh, application skill. Okay, so example is provided last week, okay, on education, compulsory education act. Okay, what happens if, okay, you don't send your child to primary school, it's against the law. Okay, so unless you have a very good reason. Uh, okay, so you can talk about what are some of the limitations of implementing this law. Okay, maybe you can opt out from this law. Okay, some of the parents, they opt out of this homeschooling is, is accepted. Huh? Okay, so my, my, the emphasis is always about stating how it works, followed by limitation. Okay, so don't jump the, don't jump the gun. Uh, don't jump to limitation. Never start off with a limitation. Okay. Okay, so last week, okay, we actually covered direct provision uh, incident accidentally, right? Okay, through the practice question, remember? Okay, so I've uploaded the answer key of last week uh, onto the LMS. So if you'd like to check how direct provision work, okay, you can look out for the answer key. 
Okay, there are specific key phrases that they want to talk about. Okay, so direct provision happens okay, when the government use taxpayers' money to okay, provide the good. Okay? So you got to look out for the extract. Okay, which extract suggests that there is direct provision? So last week the example happened to be the example um the, 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 the India government is providing okay university education. Okay, so common misconception, direct provision doesn't mean that the provision is going to be free. Okay, so uh, especially for healthcare. Okay, the example that I used was NUH and SGH. Uh, okay, these are hospitals that are provided by government. But do you go there for free? Heavily subsidized, okay, but not free. Okay, so free provision and direct provisions are two different concepts. Okay, so sometimes you'll encounter joint provision, okay, or public-private um, partnership. Okay, this is also acceptable. Okay, in fact, some of the some of the COVID uh, vaccines are actually a combination of public and private. Okay, the public actually put in some public money to encourage the private sector to speed up their their R and D. Okay, so remember to come up with limitation as well. Huh? the limitation for this are likely related to okay, so, um, the budget deficit concepts of deficit must be mentioned. Yeah, so. A deficit and opportunity cost. Okay, when we spend on direct provision on one good, okay, it's going to deprive other, okay, other sectors, okay, other areas that is going to have allocative inefficiency. Okay, so it's always about opportunity cost and trade off. Okay, focus on limitation. Huh? Okay, so I think we are pretty much done with gems ready. Oh, not yet. Okay, education. Okay, so one more. Okay, so the example that we used last week was vaccines. Do you still remember vaccines? Right? Okay, so remember, <coughs> last week we talked about the, un the underconsumption of vaccines can be due to info failure. Okay, our consumers do not know the actual benefits of consuming vaccines. Okay, so we also covered concepts of married and demarried good, right? Married good, okay, it has to contain both info failure and positive externality okay same for demerit good okay so okay, we are just looking at one aspect uh, info failure only uh. okay so you can see that the under consumption of vaccine could be positive externalities as well as info failure especially for elderly okay they are not aware of the actual benefits of vaccines okay so you are likely to encounter examples in the extract okay that requires you to contextualize Okay, for instance, if the extract tells you that elderly are unaware, uh, then you're expected to use this. And it's supposed to identify that as info failure. And then you also got to be sensitive. Okay, what are some of the policies that are available? Usually they are education based policies. So long as you see education, okay, so long as you see campaigns, then you have to be concerned that okay, um that actual that info failure could be present. So be sensitive to a policy. Sometimes the policies can tell you what are the problems that are present. Huh? Okay, so this is how you reverse deduce. Okay, what are the problems that were mentioned in the extract? Okay, so what happens when you run a successful campaign to raise awareness? Uh, then you are going to close the awareness gap. Okay, and your MPB per perceive will raise all the way to MPB actual. And you will consume at your socially optimal level. QS. Okay, down here. Okay, you're going to close the awareness gap. Okay, here. Make sure you state the limitation as well. Okay, education-based policies are highly, highly dependable on okay, receptiveness. Especially elderly. Okay, are they receptive or not? Right? If they're not receptive, then it may take a longer time period okay, for them to gain awareness of what is the actual benefit of whatever campaign they're running. Okay, I kept emphasizing on the keyword contextualization because this is the hardest part, the hardest skill set to build. Okay, but once you are adequately aware of what to look out for, then you're able to reap the benefits in the long run. Okay, so remember, content alone is not going to help. It's only the first step. You need to harness what you know in content and apply it in reality. Clear? Okay, we are done with the gems part. Okay, questions for me with regards to gems. Before I move on to plier.
If you have questions for me, you can stay back and ask me. Okay, during the break time. Okay, or later on after the class. Huh? Okay, I'm going to move on to plier. Okay, so plier will be tested later. Okay, later on won't be gems, won't be positive externalities, will be plier. Huh? Okay, so I will be going through indirect tax first. Okay, so especially for negative externalities, there are both production and consumption. Okay, positive externalities, if the extract don't mention, they are normally assumed to be positive externalities of consumption. Okay, but negative externalities, we cannot be sure. So we have to be extra careful okay, what the extract tells us. Okay, so if we see that there's carbon footprint, if we see that there's wastewater discharge, okay, we see that there's global warming, uh, then in that case, most likely it's going to be overproduction okay, of a particular good. Okay, if we see that there is uh, third-party smoke, okay, we see that there is... Uh, there is Later on, we talk about more about, it. <laughs> talk about negative externality, negative externality of consumption. I'll give you more examples. Offhand, I can't recall. <laughs> okay, but yes, okay, negative externality of production be sensitive of all these keywords. Yeah, carbon emission, carbon footprint, wastewater discharge, and global warming. You see these, ah? Uh, okay, then you have to suspect. Is it production or consumption? That's the question that you want to ask yourself. Okay, and. Once we deduce that negative externality of production is tested, one of the common ways to correct this is tax. Okay, so the same framework is going to apply okay, as what we've seen in subsidy. Okay, so we are going to assume that the tax is going to be equivalent to the level of external cost. Then, okay, the tax is going to drive up the production cost, cost of production, and it causes the MPC curve to shift to the left. Make sure you use the diagram to support, yeah, especially for policy-based questions. You cannot afford not to draw the diagram. Okay, and in this case, the, uh, the root cause of the negative externalities are overproduction by the producers. So you need to tell me, okay, producers, how will they react here? Okay, producers will internalize the external cause they will be held accountable of the third-party costs that they create, which they were initially okay, not accountable for. Right? That's the whole idea of externalities, right? You want to hold the person accountable. And when producers incur a higher production cost, they will cut back their production to the socially optimal level and they will eliminate the weight loss. And you will possibly want to state a limitation, okay? Of okay, what is the what is the limitation of tax? Okay, so remember one of the most common limitation for tax and subsidy is okay the government's ability to estimate okay the magnitude of the external cost and external benefit. Okay, what happens when the government overestimates the the tax, the external cost? If they assume that the external cost is too high, then they will impose a tax that is too high. Uh, then in that case, there will be a severe underproduction. We've seen that in the orange dead weight loss. Huh? Okay, and then okay, this may lead to massive widespread unemployment closure of firms. Okay, if they are, if they if if they if they if they estimate the external cost uh by <laughs> Or rather, if they over, if they underestimate, it means that okay, they probably, okay, they probably um, the, the, there, there will still be dead weight loss okay, as a result of uh, underestimation. So they'll impose a tax that is too little. Okay, so you may want to play around with the over and underestimation scenario. Okay, overestimate means okay, they'll impose a tax too much. Underestimate means that they'll impose a tax too little. Okay, and what are some of the consequences that you will find okay, as a government? <coughs> Any questions so far? Tax won't be tested later. Later on, I will give you some pointers. Okay, I'll point out to you which are the policies that are going to be more popular later. Okay, that you can consider. 
Hey, in fact, later on will probably will be a very good stepping stone to show you how creative questions can be tested. So sometimes you don't see you don't see plier being tested outright. Okay, but it can be tested in another in another way. <laughs> I'm sure we're going to show you that later on, huh? Alright, so for consumption-based negative externalities, they generally go through the same steps with the exception of including the consumer. Remember, production-based negative externalities, we want to hold producers accountable. So for negative externalities of consumption like alcohol, cigarettes, okay, some of the latest example, uh, please add this into page 48, uh, 46. I believe it's 46, right? Yes. 46, yep. Okay, you may want to put what? Okay, plastic bag. Plastic bag, right? So how does plastic bag come into the picture? So you have to think through a uh, plastic bag. Okay, is a well, so what kind of negative externalities can arise from the usage of plastic bag? First of all, is it a production or a consumption based negative externality? Okay, type it out, plastic bag. Which one do you all think is more undesirable? Producing plastic bag or you or consuming plastic bag? <laughs> Okay, good, okay. good jamming. Yeah, I can assure you uh, this this plastic bag thing will eventually come out. Okay. <laughs> it's just that like, it's just a matter of time. Okay, it's the consumption of plastic bag, right? So what are the third party effects that results from the consumption of plastic bag? What could be, what could be, what could, how could others be affected when you use plastic bag? Okay, so many of you all say pollution. Okay, so you realize that plastic, plastics are non, non biodegradable, especially those that are non biodegradable. Yeah. Okay, so if you don't dispose them properly, this will lead to pollution. Okay, I do know that there are biodegradable plastic bags, uh, but okay, the cost could be way higher. Alright, so you actually see that right now there's a supermarkets they are they are beginning to charge for plastic bag, right? Do you see that? That's the whole idea why you are seeing what is happening now. <laughs> plastic bag. Uh, another one is what SSB. What is SSB? Sugar sweetened beverage. <laughs> you are eventually encounter SSB very soon. Right? Sugar sweetened beverage will be what? Okay, when you consume sugar when you con consume sugar drinks, what is the third party cost to others? So the most immediate most immediate effect is obesity, right? Agreed? Diabetes. And what is the third party effects as a result of diabetes and obesity? Uh, lost productivity. Oh, and when you're hospitalized, taxpayers will have to foot the bill. So these are some of the more creative ways okay, that you have to be sensitive. So always look out for third-party costs on consumers by others. Okay, so you can see that if we want to hold plastic bag users accountable, right? Then a tax that's equivalent to the external cost. Okay, the example I use was cigarettes, lah. But can can change with a plastic bag. Okay, a tax that's equivalent to the external cost okay, will be imposed. This will drive up the production cost of plastic bags. And this will cause your MPC curve to shift to the left. And remember to include producers here. Producers will have to pass off the higher cost to consumers in the form of higher plastic bag costs. And consumers to internalize the marginal external cost. So the keyword here is consumers to internalize the marginal external cost. Uh, it's slightly different from the earlier part. Earlier part was producers to internalize the external cost. So it's different economic agents that are going to, to be accountable. Uh. So you can state what happens when consumers internalize the external cost. They will scale back on plastic bag consumption, right? So these days when you go and go to shopping, okay, you probably bring your own shopping bag, right? Okay. Do you, all, do you all see that more happening more often? People having, carrying more 
tote bag or recyclable bag yeah okay and you will you will cut your consumption of plastic back to the socially optimal level right so limitations wise you can use the same approach under or overestimation of the external cost you overestimate then you will charge too much underestimate charge too little okay another two popular limitations that you often see okay is PED is lesser than one especially for goods that are habitual in consumption okay they are habit forming like alcohol and cigarettes then okay, we can comment that okay it's a necessity good habitual good Therefore, when you impose a tax, when you drive up the price, okay, it's not going to be very effective because quantity demanded is going to fall lesser. So this is how we include elasticity in limitation. Or you can also po possibly talk about okay, the lower income earners okay, are going to be disproportionately affected by okay, the, the tax okay, because you have to pay a higher proportion of income. Okay, especially if it's a necessity good okay, like fast food okay, fast food is a necessity good for our lower income earners right and fast food is also a primary source of junk food all right ban okay i've mentioned um, last week that ban could could be tested but more probable in second years as compared to first year students huh Okay, it doesn't mean that first year students no need to know, just that it is less probable. Okay, so the whole idea behind ban is you have to be familiar with the y-axis. Okay, if you missed out last week's lesson, please catch it up. The okay, y-axis tells you that there's zero production or consumption. Okay, so when there is zero production or consumption, depending on okay, some of the goods okay, that, that is... Uh, let's say we, we look out for chewing gum. It's a consumption-based externality okay, that is banned. Okay, there could be goods that are of production ban as well. Okay, there could be goods that are production ban. Okay, so the example that we used was chewing gum, right? Was it chewing gum? I think so. Okay, last week, Monday, I think we used the word. Any other goods that were banned in Singapore that you all want to try? Go on. The usage, the consumption of the good that's banned. Firearms, firecracker, vape, drugs. Okay, true. Vape and drugs. Okay, there's an entire consumption ban, right? Okay, so you can see that why is there a consumption ban? Okay, it probably means that okay, there is exceedingly high external cost. Okay, so it's always justifying okay, the prevailing external cost. Okay, and the dead weight loss that's shaded in blue as compared to what happens when you impose a consumption ban a consumption ban where y when when your y is equals to zero x is x is equals to zero okay your quantity is equals to zero then we will we'll, we'll see that okay it's not the socially optimal level at qs uh, okay at zero it simply tells us that your msb exceeds msc so a ban does not necessitate okay, a socially optimal level. In fact, it often goes the opposite. Socially optimal level is not necessarily zero. Okay, so this is the misconception when you use ban. Not necessarily zero. Okay, just that it could be a low level. But if we impose a total ban, then we can see that at y equals to zero, sorry, when x equals to zero, when quantity equals to zero, then you will have you will incur a dead weight loss where MSB exceeds MSC. Ah, then in that case there will be severe underconsumption. Then we want to find out okay, the respective dead weight loss, which one is bigger and which one is smaller. Okay, so the blue is going to be greater than the green. Any time when the blue exceeds the green, then a band makes sense. Because we are going to trade the blue for a smaller green. So this is the whole idea behind the band. But in any time the blue is smaller than the green, then it don't make sense to have a band in the first place. Okay, so the key assumption for a band to be effective is it must be of exceedingly high marginal external cost. Okay, like drugs. Okay, there's a good reason why 
why uh, our founding fathers okay, impose a penalty law penalty penalty uh punishment okay on the uh, on, on on drugs right okay why because drugs destroy families okay the external cause is way exceedingly huge than the monetary cause involved right okay so uh, for limitation normally we end off with the size of mec Okay, as a formal as a common limitation okay not all goods okay have very high external costs okay the ban on plastic bag you think about that <laughs> yeah okay so um for certain instances we'll have regulations for uh negative externalities of production and consumption okay so for smoking is a form of consumption based externality right okay so we can see that there's a legal age that's imposed 21 years and above okay what happens if you're caught below 21 years okay then you may possibly face a fine or go to jail okay. all right alcohol is a little bit different though okay alcohol down here is from the producer perspective okay i was checking with the class earlier yesterday okay so there is a law that was passed recently that said that mandates that there is no sales of alcohol beyond 10 30. Okay, so can somebody check for me or using Google? It's, it, no sales, huh? right? Okay, I'm not sure whether consumption of alcohol beyond 1030 in a public area is prohibited. I'm not sure about that. Okay, maybe coming, can you check for me? Okay, but I'm pretty sure they cannot sell alcohol beyond 1030. Now this is a producer producer perspective. Right. Okay. Or for instance, okay. Um. For negative externalities of production. Okay. When there is too much emission, for instance. Okay. The government can enforce stricter emission, stricter uh emission rule. Okay. So factories will have to undergo, okay. Uh. uh emission tests. Oh yeah. It's for both sales and consumption. Okay. So there is zero sales and zero consumption. Beyond ten thirty is a rule. Okay, if you get caught, then okay, it is going to be a fine, okay, a penalty. For the producer perspective, they will get their alcohol license uh, revoked okay, or cancelled. Consumer will incur a fine. Okay, producer may also incur a fine. Okay, thanks, coming. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so uh, work it out. Okay, both sales of alcohol and consumption of alcohol is beyond, beyond 1030 is prohibited. Okay, as per law requirement. And back to what I've mentioned about negative externality of production. Okay, so the government can enforce stricter emission rules. Okay, so for for firms they have to undergo emission tests, okay, to make sure that they are not over polluting. Okay, that could also be a form of regulation as well. Okay, and can okay, make sure you go through the limitation, okay, for whatever policies that you state. Okay. So I'm done recapping the um, the bulk of that. I'm going to move on to the last two. Uh. Okay, the last two that wasn't covered. Okay, was tradable permits and uh, um, info failure underestimation of true cost. So this one you need to take notes. Huh? Okay, so for today, okay, I will be covering this few. Okay, it's very short because we did a lot of recap earlier on. And later on for the time practice, I'm going to give you more time to explore, to find out. Okay, what uh how what is your what is your proficiency level? Okay, it's a good summation of to sum up what you have learned for the market failure. Next week will be lecture test. Let me repeat for my first year students, next week will be lecture test. The lecture test topic will be on market failure. Okay, it's a good testing ground for you to assess whether you have yeah, you're proficient in this topic. Huh? Okay, so please study for that. Okay, and you may want to print out the question paper beforehand. Clear? Alright, so these are the few objectives that I'll be covering. Tradable permits, underestimation of true costs, okay, public good, factor immobility, the solutions for them, and market dominance. Okay, so all these four, five, six I'll be brief. Okay, because they are not the focus. They won't be the focus for the first year students. Huh? Huh? Okay, so I want you all to focus on tradable permits, uh, especially. Okay, I do know that some of you all had a recent, recent exam on tradable permits, right? Yeah. Okay. So tradable permits. Let's go. 
Okay, so how do we illustrate tradable permits? Okay, so tradable permits will always revolve among three parties. Okay, so please get this right. Okay, three parties. Okay, the first party is the government. Right, what is the role of the government here? Please take notes here, important. Huh? Okay, the government will issue permits, will allocate permits. Okay, to firms for them to pollute. So each permit will tell you that, okay, this is one metric ton of carbon that they can pollute, right? Okay, so this is the role of the government. So the government will estimate what is the socially optimal level of pollution. Okay, and based on this estimation, they will release the amount of permits that match the socially optimal level of pollution. So they'll issue permits based on their estimation of socially optimum level. All right, so is everyone okay with the government's role here? So each of these permits tells you that the firm is legalized to pollute. But if they want to pollute more, they have to buy more permits. So the whole idea behind tradable permits, you have to talk about buying and selling. Okay, so the government only allocates permits okay, to all the firms. Okay, but the buying and selling occurs between different profile of firms. Okay, so I'm going to break down into different profile already. Uh. This one is most important. Uh. We will have two profile of firms. Firms that are efficient and firms that are inefficient. I'm going to focus on which is the more important one. Okay, so if time if time permits, you talk about in talk about efficient. Okay, if if you are strict, if you are running short in time, focus on inefficient. Is everyone clear? It is it is the inefficient firms that are going to create the they are the primary culprits of the external cause. All right, so we have two profile of firms, efficient firms. Efficient firms means that they probably, they probably don't need so much permits. Okay, or they probably find that okay, uh, by investing in R&D, investing in cleaner means is cheaper than using the permit. So they don't need so much permit, right? Okay, they find it cheaper to use cleaner production means, right? So what do they do? Okay, so if they find that the cost of the cost of um, producing themselves with cleaner production means okay, is lesser than the permits, then they will choose to okay, produce on their own. Okay, because they don't need so many permits. Okay, and they will sell the balance. Okay, to inefficient firms for economic profit. So we can actually see that there are two effects that's happening. Okay, I'm gonna show you later on. Okay, let's let's illustrate the external cause here first. Huh? Okay, let's join me in drawing. <coughs> okay, so this is a rational rational producer they will produce up to mpb equals to mpc i'm sorry uh, today is a bit dry no choice okay today is really to prepare for exam so let me repeat okay for efficient firms if they find that it is cheaper okay to invest in cleaner production means as compared to r d to produce they will use cheaper production means and they will actually have excess of permits that they can sell for profit. Make sense? And for inefficient firms, they will probably find that it is more costly. Okay, costly to produce with cleaner production means. I'm so sorry I'm blocking, right? I'm going to write. I'm going to, going to drag it all the way here. Okay, you can you can just quickly write out what I'm going to say. 
here. Okay, so they find it that it's going to be relatively more costly to produce using cheap using more using cleaner means to produce using cleaner means. And they will probably find permits to be cheaper. So in any case, okay, if is if if the cost to use cleaner means exceeds the permits, then inefficient firms will always buy permits. Makes sense, right? Okay, it's cheaper to buy permits than to invest in cleaner means to produce. Okay, so from the inefficient firm's perspective, this will drive up their cost of production. Okay, and it will force the inefficient firms to internalize the external costs. Okay, and when they internalize the external costs, then your MPC curve will shift to the left. So this is how it works. Huh? It works exactly like a tax. See? Yeah. MPC plus permits. Okay, so the dirty firms will have to internalize the external costs. Okay, by spending extra economic resource or extra revenue to acquire permits. Now for the efficient firms, okay, I mentioned earlier on okay, that it is probably cheaper for them to produce with cleaner means than to buy permits. Okay, so they'll stick with cleaner means. They will sell the balance off. So for the efficient firms, we realize that when they start adopting cleaner means, the level of external cost will shrink. Let me repeat. Okay, when, cl when cleaner firms start to adopt cleaner production means, when it's cheaper, the level of external costs will start to shrink. Okay, they will have lesser carbon footprint, for instance. Okay, so for cleaner firms, huh, this is how it looks like. Okay, the MSC is actually going to be closer to MPC. So you do not need to illustrate this in, 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 in drawing. I'm just drawing this to help you to understand. Okay, that because they they adopt a cleaner production mean, okay, they have lesser carbon footprint, for instance, the external cost will be lowered. And when external cost goes down, okay, then okay, your gap between your MS, MSC and your MPC will be lesser. And you are going to produce closer to the socially optimal level. See? Your socially optimal level actually move rightwards. <laughs> okay, for cleaner production. Okay, so focus on the one that I put star. Okay, the one about dirty firms or inefficient firms. Okay, focus on that, put a star. Can? Okay, if you need to freshen up, go ahead, freshen up. If you need to drink water, drink water, need to grab some food, some drinks, go ahead. Treatable permits will be tested later. So what is the popular limitation for tradable permits? Remember we recently we did a tradable permits uh, case study? Yeah, I think it was Soy Plus 9 or Soy Plus 8, I can't recall. You can check that okay, for how limitations can be used to contextualize. Okay, contextualize manner. If not, okay, you can stick to okay, what you have seen in your in your in, you you may want to look out for these common traits. Okay, number one. Hey, always go back goes back to the government. The government will be the one that issues the permits based on their estimation of the socially optimal level of pollution, right? Okay, what happens if okay, they they think they think that there's going to be quite a sizable number of, of pollution and they over issue? What happens when there is over issuing of permits? When they overestimate the size of pollution? Then we can see that, not effective, good, not effective, but I need to elaborate further, right? So we see that when there's a surplus of permits, okay, this actually suppress the price of the permits, right? Overall, it, it will be cheaper, okay, for firms to continue to buy permits and pollute. Okay, and you'll start to see that clean firms will do the same. They probably find that right now, because of cheaper permit level, Okay, I will just buy permits and I'll pollute. So it distorts the incentive okay, to 
to to what okay to innovate okay to 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 um to to innovate and produce with cleaner 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 production means okay so this is a very popular outcome that you want to talk about huh all right, okay, I'm going to move on to the next part. Okay, tradable permits will be tested later. Huh? Next part will be on okay education on underestimation of true cost plier, the okay, E part. Okay, so now let's quickly illustrate underestimation of true cost. Okay, so give me an example. Okay, how will consumers underestimate the true cost of consuming a particular good? Which good do you think is going to be present? Which good? cigarettes so how does the consumption of cigarettes result in info failure let's do a quick content recap okay i'm going to assume all of you can draw the diagram i'm just going to quickly draw the diagram and meanwhile cigarettes was the example can y'all tell me how would a consumer underestimate the true cost of consuming cigarettes So all these all these questions that I ask you are very real. Huh? You need to you need to illustrate it yourself. And to be more specific, you got to distinguish this with external cause, right? External cause will be the party cause to others. Okay, so for info failure, we are probably concerned about the true actual cause on oneself. Okay, in the form of long term health risks that are not known. Right. Okay, and in that case, we can see that your MPC actual is going to be higher. And okay, this is uh, M MPB is going to be equal to MSB. And there is over consumption. That is due to info failure. Yeah, I'm just going to quickly shade this out. Uh, we, have, we are so done with this. Uh. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Use the wrong. Uh, yeah, come on. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is the unawareness part. All right, so what are some of the what are some of the policies to correct this? You can see that mainly education. Okay, same as same as info failure for underestimation of true benefits, we use education. So what kind of education policies are there to educate smokers? The actual cost of consuming cigarette. What do you think are the actual education policies out there how do we help smokers to realize that there are there are con there are actual consequence for con for smoking see okay so this is the part that you guys will need to be sensitive about okay, so some some people mentioned health warning on cigarette package right so you see a lot of pictures a lot of graphical pictures on cigarette package, right? Health warning. So I was actually telling the other classes, uh, okay, if you ever encounter or if you are ever, okay, I don't think any one of you are of a, of a legal age to smoke, right? Okay, but if you ever encounter a pack of cigarettes that does not have health warning or does not have graphical description on the box, Okay, you better you better toss it away. Do you know why? Do you know what's the reason of cigarette package that do not have health warnings or, or graphical pictures in Singapore? Hey, good coming. <laughs> okay, so if you encounter those without picture or without warning, they are likely not to be produced in Singapore. If they are not produced in Singapore, they are likely to be what? Smuggled into Singapore. Okay, so in this case, if you are caught okay, using a, a caught using cigarettes that have duties they are not paid, okay, you can get fined up to 10 times. Huh? Okay, that's why I say <laughs> nothing is free in, in Singapore. Yeah, so if you encounter them, if you see your friends okay, smoking all this kind of let's say illegal cigarettes, uh, make sure you educate them is important. <laughs> yeah okay so the health warnings okay the graphical pictures are supposed to educate okay the the smokers of the actual consequence 
okay, of smoking, right? Okay, and this will so-called close the awareness gap. Okay, and your MPC perceive will shift to the left towards MPC actual. And you will, please don't bring in internalizing here. There's no internalizing here. Okay, there's no external cause to internalize. Okay, so you want to illustrate that this will reduce the awareness, awareness gap. Okay, by bring the perceived to closer to the actual and you will reduce consumption to the socially optimal level. Clear? Any limitation? Let's wrap up with a limitation. Okay, what kind of limitation could be present here? Okay, for for warnings on, on cigarette package. Type it up. Quick. What are some of the limitations? Receptiveness. I think everyone is very <laughs> likes to likes to abuse this. Uh. use but not abuse. I always tell my second year students use but not abuse. Yeah, make sure you know how to play around with that. Okay, so in this case, we realize that there are a lot of smokers, despite knowing the health risks. Okay, but they still continue to smoke, right? So what does it explain? Okay. So it, it probably explains that they are fully aware of the health risks, right? So in that case, okay, from an ev evaluation perspective, you are supposed to weigh out policies. Uh, then this is probably a good synthesis that you want to construct. Okay, that, okay, despite having graphical illustrations, consequence, warning, people still continue to smoke, then the root problem is unlikely to be unawareness, unlikely. Uh, then in that case, okay, emphasis on okay, the other policies that's excluding education will be more effective. A lot of students ask me, Mr. Tio, how to construct synthesis? Huh? One way to look at it is this. What is the ultimate root problem? Okay, so I'm going to quickly sprint through the last three. Uh. The last three are the easiest. Okay, or rather, not, not the easiest. The last, <laughs> there are three. Two of them are exceptionally easy. One of them is exceptionally cancerous, but it's not going to be that that uh, that that fast. You're not going to experience it that, that soon. Huh? Okay, so for public good, refer to page 45. Okay, so to correct public good, remember public good results in zero provision. So the only solution is it has to be a government provision. Private sector will not provide that. Okay, so in terms of writing, not much to be tested. Therefore, it is one of the least likely tested policies for public good. Okay, but the problem itself, like I say, non-excludable and non-rivalrous, these two can be tested. Ah, then you have to know. Okay, so uh, direct provision. Okay, so the, the limitation is exactly the same that I've mentioned earlier on. Okay, because it's a direct provision. Okay, so we can afford to be brief here. Next, factor in mobility, page 55. Factor in mobility, we need to know that there are two specific sub-causes of factor in mobility. Remember, okay, for my first year students, uh, whenever you encounter a policy question, it is always important okay, to dissect the policies based on what are the problems. Okay, so you realize that we have learned a lot of policies. Okay, it doesn't mean that we need to use all of them. Okay, most likely it's a combination of them. But a combination requires you to identify what are the mixture of problems. So when I mean mixture, it means that for that particular question, there could be more than one problem that requires you to identify. For demary good, for instance, there will be negative externalities of consumption and info failure, right? So this is just okay, the tip of an iceberg. When we move on to the second year, we'll encounter more and more problems. Each of them will have their sub-problems. So factor immobility, two sub-problems. Occupational immobility, geographical immobility. Occupational immobility, as mentioned last week, was due to what? Okay, was due to okay, um, skill set, job skill mismatch. Okay, the particular factor cannot cannot get a job because they don't have the adequate skill set okay, for the up and coming um, sunrise industry. 
Then in that case, okay, the policy to correct that will be retraining. Okay, for my second year students, you probably know this better as supply side policy. Right? Okay, for geographical immobility, sometimes for whatever reason, okay, the particular factor would not want to relocate even though there is another job elsewhere. Right? So right now, okay, even though there's a very good job opportunity in China, would you all like to relocate? China? Right now there is a zero COVID, right? Okay, before you go to China, you have to you have to be quarantined for 21, 28 days for God knows. Yeah, so you can see that even though there is a good opportunity there, even though there is a job skill fit, okay, some of the factors are unlikely to relocate because of whatever reasons. So geographical immobility is generally categorized as whatever reasons. Things that are not related to job and skill. <laughs> yeah, unwillingness to relocate. You don't want to be quarantined. Okay, you don't want to be locked down at home. Ah, okay, all these can be can, can be sources of geographical immobility. Okay, so um, some of the examples that I've used here, okay, make sure you can illustrate them. Okay, and you see some of the some of the some of the examples are financial costs in moving home. Okay, immigrant tightening policies. Right? So how do we reverse them? Okay, so some of the expats, for instance, or some some of the considerations when you relocate to another country despite okay of a job opportunity there is high cost of living, right? Okay, so you can see that some of the policies to promote a relocation would be okay, subsidies and allowance for relocation. Okay, I give you a housing allowance. Okay, I give you school allowance for your children. Okay, you can bring your child along. Ah, then in that case, okay, this is more likely to motivate okay, the particular factor or the worker or the so-called the foreign talent to relocate. Okay, loosening of migration control. Okay, if this is a migration policy. Okay, so I personally don't think this is going to be tested, at least for the first year students. So all of you are safe up to now. Clear? So I'm just going to briefly touch on the last one, market dominance. Okay, so for my H1 students, okay, you no need to listen this. <laughs> my H2 students, it's a matter of time when we encounter market dominance. Just a matter of time. Okay, so I will just be brief. Okay, market dominance, page 54. I will cover all this in depth in the future. Okay, in term 3. For my Victoria JC students, I will cover with, you, with this with you next year. Okay, because this won't be tested this year. Okay, so the rest, KIV first. Just a matter of time. Okay, firms and decisions is the hardest out of all your first year topics. Okay, so we'll be learning some things like tax and subsidy, ACMC pricing and legislation. So I'll talk more about that. Huh? Okay, so with this, okay, I have come to the end of the policy part and the recap. Okay, so um, next week will be a lecture test followed up with um, H2 topics such as asymmetric information and asymmetric information and policies to cover that. Okay, so these are the upcoming policies, that you, the upcoming lessons that you need to know. Okay, so for exam purpose, okay, today, okay, we have covered extensively on externality and info failure policies. Okay, so just to, just to be, just to be sure, make sure you know GEMS and Plier really well. Okay, and especially education, the E part always goes to the, goes to address info failures. Right, the rest of the alphabets are all externalities related. Okay, and I don't want to spoil the soup. Later on, okay, we will experience the, the, the actual write-up together. Okay, we will build an outline together and we'll execute it together. Is everyone clear? Okay, so I would like you all to quickly grab a break and when you are back, okay, we'll construct an outline together. Okay, so with that, let's go for your break. If you have questions for me, you can stay back and ask.
Ja, nu ser dag. Och jag lät se dag. Han sa då nog att dag, jag behöver finna dag. Ja, kom här inna. Han är fyra år och kan mina kan hjälp. Minst är fyra år nu ser jag av dig. Sorry, the dog doesn't want to come in. Yeah, if I carry her now, she will bite me. Okay, great. Um, everyone should be seeing these two questions, right? Are you seeing the same questions? And let me know if you're not seeing the same questions. Huh? Okay, you're not. I'm going to assume all of you all know where to get the exact question paper. Okay, so let me repeat. Okay, C1, no need to do. Huh? C1 actually provides the context of C2. Okay, so C1 don't do. Later, only do C2. So now I would like you to spend the next five minutes to do an outline. Okay, so quickly glance through the, the entire extract and quickly scribble how would you approach. So your outline should be really brief. Okay, you shouldn't have extensive writing. You're not writing the essay. Clear? Five minutes for an outline. Then we'll compare outlines together. Go.
All right, time stop. Stop writing. Thank you. Okay, let's uncover. The, let's uncover the outline together. Okay, so uh, quick show of typing. Okay, how do you all read this particular question? Okay, one being easy, ten being hard. Oh, haven't write yet. Don't know. If you haven't write yet, don't know. You can type DK. <laughs> Sometimes is 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 until you write, then you'll find out, right? Don't know yet. Or maybe should I should I not go through the outline and then ask you all to write? Then you all will tell me. Anyone wants you to come to outline or no outline? <laughs> the panic really faster faster time. I want outline. I want outline. <laughs> no outline, huh? Okay, I don't hear from you. Means we start already, huh? <laughs> Someone crying. Okay, okay, okay. Don't cry yet. Don't cry yet. Okay, our Mister Tio, Uncle Tio, and save all. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> all right okay so uh let's re let's go through together okay so uh this is this is your uh probably one of your first few times attempting a policy based question i'm not sure have you attempted a policy based question in school yes yes yeah i know yuki yes because you asked me <laughs> okay so most of y'all have huh? so for those who haven't okay this is probably a good start so the question tells you with reference to data, okay, you must use case material. Okay, any non-referencing to case material will be awarded zero. Check if your outline. <laughs> Access whether government of emerging market and developing economies such as India should pursue the policy options undertaken by the advanced economy to deal with the harmful effects of carbon emission. So remember, I mentioned that C one and C two are related questions. Okay, so C1, they actually test you what, what concept? Divergence of private and social costs will tell you that there's external costs, right? So externality or negative externalities are present. Okay, so this is the whole idea that you want to see C1, that's it. Okay, no need to explain how negative externalities are arising again for C part 2. Okay, just go straight to the policies. So this question requires how many policies? How many did you bring in the outline? How many? Quickly. Wow, ambitious. <laughs> All right, so for case studies, uh, listen carefully. Okay, I would not advocate more than two. Okay, if it's an essay, then you can consider three. Case studies, I will not advocate more than two. Okay, so unless you are writing, you, you can write fast. Okay, if not two is good enough. Two well-developed ones. Exceptionally well-developed ones. So the risk of bringing three is you bring in three half-developed points then you're going to lose more than two fully developed ones. Okay? So now, I want you all to identify what are the policies you have identified. Just one each. Just type out one. What is your most confident policy? And sorry, viewers out there. And then there's someone that's not very cooperative outside. <laughs> Some body. <laughs> I should have muzzled her before I came in. <laughs> Quick, what is one policy? Okay, somebody brought up subsidy for... Hey, the government regulation one, you got to tell me from where. Uh, subsidy for electric vehicle, that one uh, is pretty... is, is quite, quite obvious. Government regulation from where? Type out the extract. Okay, which part of plier have you brought up? Okay, and for the subsidy for electric vehicle, <laughs> which part of plier is that? A government regulation and trade-off permits are two different concepts. Regulation involves penalty, right? Tradable permits okay, involves exchange okay, of permits. It's a market-oriented policy. So very dangerous to get, that, get, get these two mixed up. So for those who brought up three policies, I don't, I'm just curious, what is the third? Okay, so far, I have subsidy for EV. I have tradable permits. Is there any third one out there? 
Is there any lost soul, lost child out there <laughs> that I may have missed out? Actually, there is. Uh. Okay, and extract one. Okay, you can see that low carbon infrastructure project. Okay, so you may want to promote greater production or low infrastructure project or you want to okay, subsidize renewable energy. Okay, so let me repeat. I will not be using extract one. Okay, our focus today will be on tradable permits and subsidy for EV. Just focus on these two. Is everyone clear? So now I'm going to go through the outline together. Okay, you can take a look at the outline compare. Later on, you're going to execute the outline. So um, here's how is it going to work. Uh? Okay, so later on, okay, the time practice is 30 minutes. Okay, I will, I will give you a very detailed outline to execute. And okay, we will once, once your time practice is done, Okay, it is likely that we will stop at 6.30. Okay, so I will not proceed any further. So during your time practice, I will record the answer. Okay, and I'll put it up onto the LMS. Okay, and you will review the last part of the answer key and do your own correction. Is everyone clear? Okay, so when you review the clip and if there's anything that you're not sure, you can WhatsApp me. Huh? Okay, so the clip will be approximately up by dinner time. It will take about one hour to process. Okay, so anytime after dinner, you can start. Okay, do watching the ending part of the clip, doing your correction and submit. Okay, your turn-in timing is 2359 today. Clear? Alright, so how do we begin with the introduction? Okay, for your introduction, okay, you probably want to briefly state how does your okay, market failure arise. Okay, if you realize, uh, part C1 already mentioned that, okay, explain how harmful effects can create. Okay, they already illustrate the external cost part. So if you have time, okay, you can use the six-step framework, but you can omit the part about external cost. Okay, and you can omit the part about divergence. Okay, so you can, be, you can provide a really brief illustration of the six steps. Okay, and on illustrating how overconsumption or overproduction arises here and you also want to provide what are the policies that you are going to to use okay electric vehicles subsidy right i hope you identify that correctly yeah and tradable permits so i'm going to highlight some of the potential risks of executing this so some of the students will tell me should and should not so if they choose this broad framework of should and should not, then there is a chance that the policies that they bring in under should okay, will be diluted. Let me repeat. If you bring in should follow, should not follow, then your should part, if you bring in two or three policies, they will be broadly lumped under should. There's a risk of dilution or there's a risk of your points being underdeveloped. Okay, so how I would recommend this uh, is to break up your writing by policy. Okay, so you want to bring up tradable permits here. Okay, and within tradable permits, you can go on to illustrate should and shouldn't. So this is how I recommend. Okay, I don't recommend breaking, breaking it down to should and shouldn't and then you put in the policies. Okay, it's a different way of categorizing. So tradable permits, okay, is going to happen. Is going to work out as um, roughly what I've mentioned earlier on. Okay, remember all this. Okay, you're going to explain this later on. Okay, so remember, you shouldn't start with shouldn't first. Always illustrate how it works. Okay, so you want to talk about the three respective agents involved: government, clean, and unclean or, or inefficient firms. Right, and you want to emphasize on the tradable element. Okay, and make sure, okay, if you are running short in time, you can afford to be brief on the part on, it, on efficient firms. You can afford to be brief. Okay, but the, the focus should be on inefficient firms. Okay, you want to use an externality framework to illustrate how they internalize the external cost. Clear? So I'm looking out for candidates' um, effort to contextualize contextualize 
Okay, you are supposed to use case evidence to suggest okay, what are the tradable permits that are used, how are they used. Okay, so be exceptionally wary about case evidence. How are they portrayed to you and how you can use it to support how it works. Is everyone clear? Now, for the student part, we are looking out for a limitation. Remember just now I was going through a limitation with all of you? So your job, likewise, is to find out how you can contextualize okay, with respect to the extract. Okay, what does the extract suggest about the effectiveness? Ah, and then you go on to expand that. So tradable permits, okay, I, I'm going to give you the bare minimum because I've already did my job earlier part. Your job is to write it in full, execute and contextualize. Okay, make use of every opportunity to quote from the extract. Okay, why? Okay, is there or, or where do you get this case case reference or case material from? So the part that I want to talk about, okay, is EV and subsidy. We realize that tradable permits, uh, they loosely fall under the GEMS framework, right? Sorry, Pliers framework. You see that? Under permits, do you see that? Tradable permits. Right, for EV okay, and subsidy, where do you think it fits under? Tap it out. <laughs> so I'm asking you a very, a very practical question because what you are going to answer here is likely to reflect in your exam. Okay, so someone brought up GEMS regulation. Okay, so I just want to bring out uh, a lot of students, especially when they see subsidies, uh, the natural instinct for them is to bring in positive externalities. Okay, so this is a very common uh, relation. Subsidies will bring in positive externalities to correct positive externalities. In this case, okay, we we understand. Remember, C one tells us that there is overconsumption or overproduction, right? Okay, so in this case, positive externalities cannot happen here. So you have to reject this outright. Okay, if you bring in EVs and positive externalities, okay, then you are way, way out of point, really. How do we know is this way out point? It's actually mentioned in the extract. Okay, and you have to be careful. You can see that EVs are still disadvantageous as compared to conventional vehicle. Okay, so what can we deduce about the relationship between EVs and conventional vehicle? If they are disadvantaged, what is the primary relationship? S word. Good, Gerard. So this advantage suggests that there's a hierarchy, right? Okay, so we, we can also we can also think from the perspective that since there's a hierarchy that's related. Okay, so they are likely to be substitutes. So convention vehicles are likely to be run with fuel. Okay, and we see that when you run with fuel, when you drive a car, Okay, the internal combustion energy will result in carbon footprint. See, carbon emission. Right? So when we use EV, it does not necessarily mean that the carbon footprint is, is, uh, is definitely lesser. Okay, some of the EVs run on hybrid. Some of them still run on ele electricity. Definitely cleaner. Okay, but it's still relatively cleaner. It's not entirely clean. There's still carbon footprint. And it still it still relate it still creates congestion, but in this case it's carbon emission. Let's stick to that. Okay, so let, let, let me repeat one more time. Electric vehicle itself okay does not generate positive externalities. Okay, so relative to convention vehicle, okay they are cleaner. So you have to identify that the concept that is tested here is substitute. Okay, not positive externality. So how it works should. Okay, you got to identify that they are substitutes. Okay, and you got to identify case materials that suggest that there is a 
subsidy okay, to increase supply of EV, right? Okay, so if you read the extract carefully, you are able to cite the extract. Okay, and when you provide a subsidy okay, to electric vehicle, this will this will what? Lower the price of electric vehicle. Yes. And when price of electric vehicle goes down, quantity demanded for electric vehicle goes up, law of demand. And there will be a substitution effect. So the substitution effect will affect what? Remember, okay, the, the, the primary focus of carbon footprint and carbon emission is because of the usage, the consumption of okay, combustion vehicle or internal combustion convention vehicle. So with a substitution effect, this will lead to a fall in demand for convention vehicle. Hey, are you following me? And you have to work out even further. We realize that okay, the derived demand for fuel comes from the demand for convention vehicle, right? If demand for convention vehicle goes down because of a substitution effect, we can deduce that the derived demand for fuel will also go down. So this is the catch. And now, okay, let's use the diagram to illustrate. Huh? So for instance, if we look out for this, okay, this is the okay, uh, negative externalities as a result of uh, consumption of fuel. Uh, then in that case, okay, how are we going to illustrate this? We realize that because of a fall in derived demand for fuel, this is how it's going to work. Okay, your demand for fuel is going to go down. So this is the diagram that you need to show. Okay, the private demand or the MPB of fuel is going to fall to the left. Okay, so the concept is using the concept of demand, okay, relating to a car and derived demand to fuel. <laughs> and when there's a fall in derived demand for fuel, MPB of fuel will go down. And we will reach the socially optimal level of consumption where MPC equals to MPB1. So common pitfalls uh, is to relate EVs to positive externalities. This is the surest way to die. Okay, so this kind of approach, whenever you suspect okay, that there is a subsidy to a related good, you have to ask yourself, how are they related? Most likely to be substitutes. And if there are substitutes, then this is the possible approach that you want to consider. Okay? So unfortunately, this, this does not fall under player. Okay, player is, is not captured here. Yeah, but this is one of the newer ways that you can use to address this question. Okay, next, you possibly want to illustrate how when your MPB goes down, this will result in a socially optimal level of consumption of fuel. And you eliminate the weight loss. Okay, and you want to build shudan. So for the shudan part, uh, okay, you need to look out for the extract. Okay, there's a particular glaring uh, limitation of this subsidy. Okay, you can find out from there. Okay, I'm not going to spoil it. Okay, look out for extract. Okay, so, so far the approach will be should for both policies followed by shouldn't for both policies. Okay, make sure you use the correct framework of externality. And in case you, do, you don't know, uh, okay, the one on the left is tackling negative externalities of production. <laughs> Okay, the one on the right is tackling negative externalities of consumption. Okay, usage of fuel when you drive car is a consumption-based externality. Okay, when you produce stuff, it's a product producer-based externality. So make sure you are able to deduce this too. Uh, okay, that 
although we are we are roughly talking about negative externalities okay the the, the key distinguishing difference is they are targeting slightly different problem yes okay so synthesis for my stronger students I want you to build a synthesis. I want you to justify okay, which policy should India use and why. Okay, you need to justify why. Okay, that's only when you are confident to develop these two points in depth. Okay, so for my students who are still busy figuring out, okay, at least get the tradable permits right. Tradable permits is a bad and bread and butter. You don't get to see EV and subsidy very often. Clear? But at least get the tradable permits right. Okay, with the limitation. So do, do all of you have things that you need already? More or less? Okay, so remember, okay, your time okay, is 30 minutes. 3-0. Okay, I'm going you can skip C1 and go straight to C2 following the same same format. Okay, and okay, when you are ready, okay, you can start right now. Okay, my time now is 6.03. Okay, we'll stop at 633. So right now I'm going to record, so I will turn off my video and I will go on mute. Okay, so if you need my private attention, you can just drop me a, a PM. Okay, I'll hop, hop back in. Clear? All the best. Okay, thanks Joanne. All the best. Let's go. All right, so for the viewers out there, I'm going to go through the answer right now. Okay, so make sure you have allocated 30 minutes to complete this assignment. If not, you can pause this, okay, and review the outline that I've covered earlier on. Okay, so um, like I said, this is one of the newer questions that focus a lot on electric vehicle like Tesla, etc. Okay, so these are the ongoing themes on environmental concerns. That's why the importance of EV is important. Huh? Okay, so I'm going to move on to the answer key. Okay, so uh, yes. Okay, we are going to move on to C part 2. Okay, this is the question. Okay, so um, I'm going to mention what are the things that are, are good to have. Okay, and what are the things that I that, that 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 you need to illustrate? Okay, so remember, actually, C part one. Actually, um, if you if you if you record it or if you acknowledge what I've mentioned earlier on, C part one actually captures a few steps, like like the step two, okay, the external cost, okay, and step three, and step some part of step three and step some part of step five. Okay, so in your write-up, you can afford to be brief. Okay, so you can afford to summarize. Okay, what are the six steps? So this is what I recommend, is the summary of the six steps. Okay, especially the third-party course. Yeah, third-party course actually mentioned already. Huh? Okay, so uh, in any case, okay, if you are totally rushing for time, I perfectly acknowledge because this is the last question that you often encounter. Okay, so if you are rushing for time, you realize that C1 already partially addressed how market failure arise, then you can afford to be brief and skip, okay, and go straight to the policy. 
Okay, so there are potentially three policies. I recommend no more than two unless you can write fast. Tradable permits, investment in alternate energy source, and promotion of electric vehicles through subsidy. Okay, you can pick any of any two of the three here. All right, so now I just want you to tally whatever that we have covered here. Okay, to what we have covered earlier on in the content session. Okay, remember the part about tradable permits. Okay, so now let's tally them in words. Okay, so number one, okay, the government will set a limit on the amount of pol pollution, and based on the number of pollution, they will concede they will release the ideal amount of permits to pollute. Okay, so firms must acquire the permits to pollute, and the market decides on the price to allocate the permits among firms. Okay, so firms that can reduce their emission more cheaply, okay, by investing in cleaner production means. Okay, they will have the incentive to cut their emission and they'll sell excess permits to firms. Okay, so in another words, let me repeat, especially for cleaner firms, if they find that it's easier to cut emission, okay, through 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 more effective production, more efficient production means, Okay, and this will actually strengthen their incentive to cut emission. Okay, and they can sell the excess permits to the um, the um, thirty firms. Okay, so this is where you can see okay, the tradable permit works in such a way that it charges power plants and factory for every tons of CO two that they emit. So this is what I mean by contextualization. Okay, you are able to cite from the extract. Okay, and you can see that firms will always find it cheaper. Assuming firms find it cheaper to pursue to purchase permits rather than cleaner ways of production, dirty firms, okay, in this case, will buy permits. They find that it's more costly to invest in cleaner ways of production, then they will buy permits. Yeah, so this is uh th this is uh pretty straightforward. Clean firms, okay, they will want to sell their permits. Okay, because they find it easier to cut their emission. The three firms finding it hard to cut their emission, okay, they, they find it that it's cheaper to buy permits, they will always buy permits. Okay, so firms will internalize the external costs through the acquisition of additional firms, and this will lead a result in the MPC curve shifting to the left. Okay, and this will correct the overproduction. Okay, you realize that we didn't we didn't talk about the clean firms okay, shrinking the level of MEC because it's not really required. Okay, it's good to have. So if time permits, then you want to talk about when clean firms okay, decide to adopt cleaner production means, over time, the level of MEC will be lesser and lesser. Huh? Okay, so this policy is only effective in resolving the market failure if the price of permit is right government can correctly estimate the maximum level of pollutants. Okay, so you can see that extract tree suggests that price of tradable permits were low because of financial crisis. Okay, and therefore, okay, if price of your permits are low, the cost of production will increase to a smaller extent instead of the full extent. Okay, so the, the dirty firms will not pay the full price huh, okay, for the permits. And this will render the scheme ineffective. So you can actually see that this is using extract tree. Okay, so it's not like you know the everyday kind of limitation that you see. You have to think through how to apply whatever that we have discussed, okay, in or seen in your lecture notes and how to marry it with your okay, case study. Okay, so you can pick any one of these limitations. Okay, so I just, just stating this. This is one way to talk about that. Okay, the second way to talk about that, okay, you can result in inequity. Okay, why? Okay, because you can see that high prices of energy and electricity production, you see that? High carbon costs make fossil fuel more expensive. And this will result in higher electricity wholesale price. So how, how what is the significance of this? Okay, we know that energy is a necessity good, PD is lesser than one. Okay, increase in price will lead to lesser than proportional fall in quantity demanded. Okay, so what does it mean? Okay, it means that um, 
um, your, your energy is highly is of high necessity okay for every given in, increase in price your quantity demanded is going to fall lesser and on top of that okay you realize that the lower income earners will be the biggest loser especially when energy is necessity because they have to pay a higher proportion of income in the form of tax especially when it's a necessity so you want to relate to an unintended consequence here okay and you can see the combination of pd being inelastic and inequity coming in together okay so you can choose either one or two as a form of limitation okay remember okay i'm looking out for contextualization okay, if you have any other points that you're not sure okay uh, if i'm not covering this in in person with you can check with me via whatsapp Okay, I will address them. Okay, or you can drop me a comment under the, the comment segment. Okay, next I'm going to move on to India's uh, pursuing of uh, EV. Okay, so you have to identify this as a subsidy, but you have to reject the hypothesis that this is a positive externalities. Okay, so you can see that when the government provides grants and all this weight of the power batteries, okay, so this will lead to lower cost and lower price of electric vehicle. You can possibly relate this to, okay, increase in supply through a subsidy for EV, as per what we have mentioned earlier on. Okay, so this will lead to a fall in demand for the substitutes such as car that run on petrol. Okay, and this will reduce the overconsumption of conventional vehicle. Okay, where MPB is reduced to MPB1. Okay, and you can see that this will result in a fall in derived demand for energy fuel. Okay, so you can potentially use the market of fuel or the market of internal combustion energy vehicles okay, or what is called convention vehicles. Both of them are approximately the same. You do not need to use the fuel market here. If you use the fuel market, also can. Okay, if, you use, uh, com you know, if you use the ICE vehicle market, also can. Okay, so the whole idea is to reduce the private demand of car or the derived demand of um, convention v, uh, of, of, of fuel to your socially optimal level at QS. Okay. So this actually reduces the, uh, you can see that when we reduce the derived demand for car, so the derived demand for fuel or reduce the demand or MPB for car, okay, we are going to consume at the socially optimal level and this eliminates the dead weight loss. Okay, next, okay, we will want to see how okay, a limitation here works. Okay, so the limitation here it works is very specific. Okay, you all want to talk about okay, the specific high price tag of EV. Okay, so we realize that because EV like Tesla, for instance, they are priced exceedingly high. So if we want to provide a subsidy, okay, it has to be a significant amount of subsidy. If not, okay, we cannot effectively we cannot e effectively encourage consumers to acquire EV. Okay, so this is the limitation. You can also talk about worsening of budget position. So the whole whole idea is this. Okay, the extract gives you emerging market and developing economies like India. Right? So these countries are known to be developing countries. Developing countries are known to be poor. So they may not be able to subsidize electric vehicles like this of this magnitude. Okay, and even if they were to subsidize of this magnitude, this will incur an opportunity cost in other areas. Okay, when you spend on subsidizing EV, you're going to deprive other areas such as healthcare. Okay, so overall, you want to build a synthesis. Actually, I've given you guys a, a pretty sound or pretty decent um, approach really. 
Okay, you remember I brought up that there are two different problems, negative externality of production and consumption. Okay, we can see that the growth in India's energy demand is primarily driven by power, uh, power generation and by transport. So both of these will lead to carbon emission. Okay, consumption of oil and production of coal. And therefore, whichever policy that you decide on, okay, really depends on okay, what is the root problem. Whether is it overproduction by the energy sector or overconsumption of oil okay, in the transport sector. And you can see that because of the nature of emerging economies, okay, industrial activities like coal production is likely to be more important. Why? Because they are there to support the growth of the economy. And therefore, okay, the Indian government should focus on tradable permits. Okay, you can see that there is a step-by-step -step illustration on how to, how to weigh out what is the most important problem first before we justify okay, which policy to address which problem. Okay? So I'm just going to go through some of the popular uh, or some of the markers comments. Huh? Okay, so you can see that India exhibits two different forms of negative externalities. So if you didn't use uh, um, electric vehicle, you can you talk about investing in renewable energy, then you can afford to skip consumption because investing in renewable energy is a form of production-based uh, negative policy to address production-based negative externalities. Okay, so point two and point three are trying to illustrate the concept of substitutes. Okay, so you have to identify that electric vehicle and convention vehicles are substitutes. Okay, and therefore, okay, one of the popular limitation okay, of substitutes, okay, you can also comment about the strength of substitute. Okay, like what I mentioned earlier on, okay, you can either use the approach of a uh, conventional vehicle or you can go straight to the, the, the source of market for, for, for fuel. It doesn't really matter. Okay, we can see that. Okay, let's stick to convention vehicle. Uh, let's stick to convention vehicle. Okay, we can see that if electric vehicle for some, for some reason is not a good substitute, then your MPB will shift lesser to the, to the left. And we will not be at a socially optimal level. You see that? Okay, so how could we actually justify that it is not a good substitute? Okay, we can possibly comment about, okay, maybe electric vehicle is not very reliable. Okay, you need a lot of charging point. Okay, your battery, your battery pack could be a very small capacity. Okay, you need to need to find a lot of charging point along the way. So in this case, it's not as reliable as a fuel convention vehicle. And therefore, okay, because of a weak strength of substitute, your demand is going to fall lesser. And when the demand falls lesser, okay, yours, you're not going to cut your consumption to your socially optimal level. Okay, if you want to relate to the fuel perspective, then you will relate to a lesser derived demand for fuel. And that also works. Okay, and when there's lesser derived demand for fuel, then your socially optimal level of consumption of fuel will not be achieved. Okay, so like I've said, uh, you can use either the fuel approach okay, or the conventional vehicle approach okay, for this diagram. Okay, both of them are acceptable. Okay, so candidates should focus on two policies instead of three. Okay, any uh and if you if you over if you if you if you focus on three, okay, the potential risk is you may overplay your hand, okay, and you have three uncooked eggs instead of two fully cooked eggs, okay, and you end up with a diarrhea, huh? Okay, so with that, okay, I am going to sign off. If you have any questions for me, please raise it up, okay, I will address that, okay. If not, okay, I will, uh, I will call it a day, okay. And thank you all for participating, okay. I'd like to hear from you if you have any feedbacks. Okay, and that's it. Thank you.